Hi everyone, my name is Matthew and I'm an engineer here at Hawkridge Systems and today I'm going to be talking about the idea of going directly from 3D scanning to a 3D print. Now I've been asked over the years, are there ways to go directly from 3D scanning to a print? And my answer is yes, there are uh, plenty of ways to do this. Now the question becomes what is the part that you need to do it with? You know, there are going to be times where to keep tolerances, have specific hole locations, or need Class A surfaces for machining, where reverse engineering is still needed. But if there are situations where you just need to scan a part and create a replica of it, such as like a molding of some kind, you can do this without having to do any reverse engineering. We'll be talking about a case where we took this legacy part, as you can see it's a metal shoe insert, and how we scanned it and then send it directly to a printer without having to touch any reverse engineering, just doing light cleanup in our meshing software. Now, the software we will be using is Artec Studio to do a lot of this cleaning, but keep in mind that whatever meshing software you're using, maybe it is also Geometric Wrap or, or VX Model, that you can do a lot of these processes within it as well. Now, for starters, this shoe insert does have some wares. It's made of cast iron, and we see this a lot with molding that if a tooling has been used quite a lot, it's going to get naturally cut up and dented. And if you only have one available, you're going to want to make sure it's archived or digitized before it completely wears down so you can reproduce it. Now, something like this, while it is a little heavier and, and does have that casting, we're going to want to remove a lot of this before we actually send it to the printer. Now, the scanner we used to scan this was the Artec Space Spider, and it produces a very high fidelity mesh file, which is phenomenal for most cases. But if we are trying to send it to a printer, we don't want that natural wear and tear included on the mesh file. So this is where we go in and do a little bit of cleaning before we actually send it off to the printer. Now, what is those cleanings? Well, for starters, the first thing we usually will do is de-feature. Now, de-featuring is the ability to take a specific area, like maybe this letter that's on the side of this part, and highlight it and delete it and then do a tangent hole fill to patch it over. This gives the look that there is no feature uh, at all, and you can blend it all together with the rest of them, or the mesh file. So, defeaturing is what we will commonly do to remove big bulky areas of our parts from a 3D scan. Once we've done the defeaturing, we can go in and smooth it. Now, a smoothing command will go in and polish off the surfaces so it's a very nice, even surface finish. You know, for little wears and tears, micro cracks, fractures and dents, these are things that, again, we don't want to have in our printed version. We're going to want to smooth away before we send it off to the printer. So what we can do is just use that defeature tool and a smoothing brush in combination with one another to give a very nice look to our parts. And that is how we can take features like these kind of dents on the back of it and remove them away so that way we have a very nice clean back on the part itself or a printed version. And we don't have any kind of letterings or anything like that like we would have with the cast iron or, or used tool itself. Now, do keep in mind when you are doing a little bit of this cleaning that the defeature tool will remove a bulk of data, but they're you know not going to want to be using it for everything. We're not going to want to remove all those micro cracks with it, which is why we do that combination of defeaturing for the bulk of data and then the smoothing brush to kind of give a nice even look to it all. And we're going to be able to do this with pretty much the entire mesh. It's very common to be able to go through, use that smoothing brush to really clean up give a nice even surface finish before we do any kind of printing with the parts. And you also can keep in mind that this is a iterative process. You might do a little bit of defeaturing, then go over with the smooth brush and, and polish it up and, and kind of repeat that process throughout the mesh. And again, this is gonna be a lot easier than having to reverse engineer those surfaces. The mold is pretty much there. We're just gonna to wanna to get rid of a lot of those micro cracks and you know bumps and letterings that we don't want in our, our new digitized version of this item. So that way we can add those in afterwards if needed. And once we've gone through and done a lot of that smoothing and whatnot, we've gotten a lot of the process done and we didn't have to do any reverse engineering to get a nice clean mesh file to send off to our printer. But we could take it a step further. We don't have to just stop with that. And you know, with the clean mesh, we could export it as an STL file and send it off. But if we want to make it a little easier to print, we can do a little bit of extra prep inside of our software. So for starters, what we can do is an alignment. Now, when you do a 3D scan, a lot of your scans are going to be in different orientations and you align them together. And the problem with this is that when you export it, it's going to keep that orientation. So because we're printing this on the HP printer, we're going to want to make sure it's as, as good as an insert as we can so we can really nest it well. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to orientate it to a global coordinate system. In this case, we're going to choose the bottom side of it 
and just add in a couple control points. That way it is pointing directly up when it goes into our next software. So this is all done to the mesh. Again, no kind of modeling needed. We just orientate that mesh inside of the software. So when we export it, it comes out a lot better. Uh, some other cool things we can do beyond just cleaning it up is mirroring and scale of the part. So now that we have our initial model cleaned up and it's been orientated to a coordinate system, we can duplicate it. So that way we have our old version saved. And with this duplicated one, we can now scale it up by 15 to 20% if needed, or even a two times. And this is all done through a sensor, so it's a very uniform scaling. It's not in an X or a Y direction. It's the entire part scaled by that through the mesh itself. So not only can we scale it, but we can even mirror it. So now instead of having just one version of this, you know, shoe insert, the, the one side, we can mirror it across that coordinate system. So that way we have a different version. And this is all done directly with the mesh. So no modification needed. And it's all, you know, a uniform mirroring based off of that coordinate system. And because we've aligned it, it is a very clean mirror itself. So at this point, we now have our multiple versions of this insert. We got the original, we got the scaled and we can export this as an STL file, and we're ready to go with printing it. If we look inside of the X-Ray tool inside of Artec Studio, we can see the inside of the scan. And we can see that it's pretty uniform, which is really good. We wanna make sure that it is a manifold, which means that there is no inner sides of it that can cause disruptions with our print. Especially if we're doing a multi-jet fusion print with the HP, we wanna make sure that there's no cavities within it that would cause a problem. So at this point, you know, we have our meshes made, and we can still go a step further if we really want when it comes to editing the mesh inside of our tech studio. So because we have this mesh inside of here, and maybe there is a situation where we need to have a specific hole cut out, instead of having to, again, reverse engineer and model up all this CAD stuff, we can directly edit the mesh with inserted features. So now we have this perfectly clean model, but if we need to have a hole location cutout, we can add in a cylinder and Boolean it away from the mesh itself. So that way, when we send it off to a printer, it does have that exact hole size. And because we've coordinated or aligned it to a coordinate system, we can properly place that cylinder in the right location. And we can do this even with a cut plane tool for parts that maybe are a little too big to fit into one single print, or we want to chop off the top of this so it's a very nice, clean surface. We can do that. We can add in a plane. We can split our meshes as well. And you know, now we have two versions of uh, or two sections of this mesh. So it's easier to print if it is a larger one. So at this point, we've now taken this old legacy kind of heavy cast iron part with all these dents and wears. And you know, if we only have one, we got to make sure it's safe. And we now have a very lightweight, easy to print version that's scaled and can be manipulated even further from the mesh itself. So this is just one situation. Now molding and, and casting parts, this is pretty common where we see this, but there are other situations such as art and statues that, you know, again, you don't want to modify the part. You just want to scan it and then send it right to a printer, maybe scale it a little bit. And this is all doable without having to touch a lick of reverse engineering. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you do, please like and subscribe to our channel. And if you want to see more videos on SOLIDWORKS, 3D printing, 3D scanning, take a look at our catalog. We have a lot of interesting videos and helpful tips.